Hi everyone. Great news today, huh? So the Prime Minister has told us we've got things to look forward to next week. Opening of gateways, opening of restaurants to 10 people so you can eat with your family, bigger, bigger numbers together. Finally, you know, you can have your usual uh, get together with family members or with friends. And of course, uh, the fact that we have a choice of whether to carry on wearing our masks outside in public. Uh, but remember, do take care and uh, if you're in closed areas, make sure those masks remain on. Because it's always good to still be careful, although we've been given the go-ahead to move on with life. Uh, it's not a free-for-all that you just do as you please after this. So please have respect for yourself, have respect for your friends. Um, I'm very grateful indeed for what the government has been doing for the last few months. And even with uh, COVID, uh, they've been very careful about hospital and what's going on in hospital. And uh, in fact, last week I had a first-hand view of what really goes on in the wards and you know the hard work that our frontliners have been putting in, um, in, in all the hospitals and all the uh, medical centers. But one experience which I have personally, uh, a lot of you have been asking because uh, in the last few days, some of you have noted uh, some of the pictures I've posted with my family. Uh, there are certain things that uh, may have raised your curiosity. So I hope to reveal this in today's video. And not hope, I'm going to tell you what it was. And uh, Karen watching. What I'm about to tell you may not make a difference to most of you, but may I just implore that you give a listen because it just might save your life in one of these days. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but just to let you know it does happen because it happened to me. Um, well, let me just tell you as it is. Two weeks ago, I wasn't feeling so good and I was feeling very tired most days. And by the end of the day, I'd feel so lethargic that when I came home, even before bed, before dinner, I would take one nap. My naps normally 10 minute power naps. But what happened was I found myself taking half an hour naps before dinner, after dinner, before bed. So I realized that was not, I was not my usual self. Uh, then my wife Lynette, of course, she's been looking after me for Wow, 36 years, even more than that before we got married. And she said I didn't look normal and, you know, I was very lethargic. And I also felt that way and that's why I went to see the doctor at CGH for a check on my ears, my balance and actually made an appointment to see a neurosurgeon uh, or rather a neurologist. Um, but that appointment itself is not till Two weeks from now but nonetheless on my on monday and tuesday last week after class full day classes which i conducted um, i felt that that was something very wrong because my head was getting very heavy and whenever i leaned forward uh, it felt as though my body could not move back and as well um, i was getting giddy and Although I was not giddy as such, and I didn't have headaches, it was something that um, was not normal to me. I, I take it back, I did have two bouts of headaches, which is not normal. So on Wednesday morning when I woke up with the same feeling, I told my wife Lynette, I said, let's go to A&E because this is strange. And she said, and she agreed and we, and we she whisked me off to the nearby hospital and that's where I had the shock of my life after the doctor saw to me and he said he did the usual you know scans and stuff then he said look I need you to go to a CT scan and when the results came out for the CT scan he said I'm afraid uh, Mr Humphrey I don't have very good news for you uh, you've had a brain bleed uh, which amounts to a stroke 
And that really shocked me because never in my life I would think of something like that happening to me such such, such a young age. Okay, lah, not young age, lah, I'm 63. But the fact that it happened uh, really shocked me. So he gave me two choices. He says, look, you can go back and discuss with your family what you want to do, but I would suggest that you have this immediately. And I asked him, Doc, what's, what's the read? He says, well, it is life-threatening. And before he could say anything further, I says, look, if it's life-threatening, I'm not going to go back and think about it. Let's, can we do this all today? And he looked at me very puzzled and, you know, very surprised that somebody would just decide on doing that immediately. But folks, it's in your brain. You know it's there. What do you want to go back and think about some more? So I decided and looked at Lynette and I said, let's just do this. We didn't give each other enough time to think about it or, or, or put the fear in of ourselves into it and back out. So I said, let's do this. And the doctor prepped me and uh, he said, okay, we'll we'll prep the operating room, we'll give you a waiting room and stuff like that. And yeah, I went in at 10 o'clock in the morning, saw the doctor at about uh, 12 o'clock, got everything checked, and I was in the operating theater by six o'clock. Out of the operation by eight o'clock, into the high dependency ward, and spent two nights there. You wanna hear more? Follow on. <laughs>